Hey there. Hey, I come up with a, a pretty good solution for me for um, lighting and some little more magnification around the tool and cutter grinder, which is very helpful as you get older. <laughs> so this is what I come up with to mount a lamp on the top or in other places too. I come up with this piece of aluminum here. I knurled it. And what it does, I put this uh, 3 8 stud in there, but it could be a half inch or whatever uh, fits. And then this end is just simply drilled for a, a flex arm lamp, magnifier lamp, or those other type of lamps. I got quite a few of them around here. So I'll show you how this is installed. Okay, I'll flip this around. You should be able to see. So I got a T-nut here. Slip that in there, then this just uh, screws in at the right length to where it's going to lock. See, make a move it, nope, clear out the other side. Got to be careful, don't dump your whole lamp on the ground. Okay, I'll put it right there. Snug it down with a convenient neural. Now, here is a great junk store find. It's uh, a magnifying lamp of good quality. It's American-made electrics. But, you know, the import ones uh, would work in a pinch. So, and of course, you buy these things and they're missing the table clamp, right? This is only like three dollars. So that slips in there. Okay. And we'll fire this thing up. Got one of those circling lamps in there. You hold the button until it glows and let go. Then you got fire. Okay. Oop. Try not to shut it off. Let's rotate this thing back over this way. Ah. The real machine tool stuff's heavy. <laughs> then you can pull it down like forward and down. And let me get this loose and we'll have a look. Yeah, see? Let me get your uh, big mitts in there and do some fine tool grinding. I don't know if you can see what's the best magnification, but that solved my problem. And the neat thing about this thing, look at this. It rotates clear around to this side. It's just fantastic. Hey, I was going to mention, one of the neat things about having such a small space is being able to maintain a comfortable temperature in here. I still have my coat on because it's like 20 degrees outside. <laughs> Little skiff of snow it's going kind of drying up and go blowing away but it's quite cold and in here on the official thermometer it's right about 68 degrees and uh that's a fairly accurate thermometer and that's the ideal temperature for a little shop situation like this and i'm cleaning this mess up here and i'll tell you one of the best things i've done is go old school and uh, have wood grates to walk on. Oh, I've worked on bare floor, I've worked on fancy rubber mats, the whole thing, but nothing beats this. That's my opinion, and my feet agree. So I'm uh, kind of did a a full run making the <laughs> making this uh, rest in here and I used uh, the axle sign here and uh, the um, brown and sharp horizontal uh, milling machine with the sliding vertical head with quill feed and it you know if this thing come out nice it looks good it works good I, it, it's easy enough to hold tolerances so you know, this old time stuff is just great. And um, when it needs to be a little bit better, <laughs> I've got the, uh, the jig bar over there and uh, 
the fabulous, incredible, invincible monarch 10 double E lathe. It's just great. I also got a hard inch chucker. I'm a real hard inch fan. And uh, I, I never get in the argument, which is a better tool room lathe, because they're both kind of unique. You know, they both come from different directions. The hard inch comes from this. And uh, the uh, Monarch 10 E comes from uh, the Monarch line of uh, geared head lathes. So it's sort of like a, a technology that met in the middle, sort of, and each has benefits and each has uh, drawbacks. So the only solution is get both. <laughs> That's what an old guy tells me. And I think he's right. So one of the things I got, oh yeah, see cleanup is real easy here. I just pick up the grates and sweep it up. And then as these chips hit the floor, and I'll tell you what, this machine here and the, and the horizontal mill, those make a lot of chips. If you're moving some material, you got a lot of chips. It's uh, pretty amazing uh, how quick you can uh, have chips all over the floor. And that's the benefit of this, these wood grates. Over the years, uh, they've fallen out of favor. They're probably a fire hazard. Who knows how people are allergic to them. You get splinters barefooted, I don't know. But uh, you don't see it very much. And uh, I like it, so I'm using it. But uh, the, like the chips, would like uh, fall on there, you know. Let's see if I can get something shook on there, like that. Then as you walk along, see so you just take and scoot them off with your foot. Then you're not, then you're not walking in this stuff. That's real fatiguing. It makes me tired to be walking in a pile of crap like that. So you see, it just falls right through the grades. And you can let the stuff build up. Yeah, you just scoot it off. And, uh, you know, I kind of like that. You know, I've got uh, over here, I'm doing uh, the, uh, I don't know what's with the editing program. I'll try to make that work. But it's best if I walk away from it for a while because I think they're trying to make me uh, pay for it. <laughs> There's... It's a long story how they, they have free, then you can start paying and stuff. They made like hundreds of videos free, and they've done it before you go to load a video, and they, all of a sudden they want you to pay for the premium, and you can't load your video, and that's what happened. But anyway, I got this Gray Lab timer going there set for 11 minutes, and I got a couple minutes left there, and when that goes off, I have to uh, shut off because of the nature of the GoPro camera. You can't uh, uh, have a video longer than uh, 11 and a half minutes without using an editing program to put it together. And when you put it together, it's seamless. But uh, without a program, you could, you're limited to uh, 11 and a half minute videos. Okay, so that's that. And one of the things I found over here is uh, this type of vise. Oh, like uh, this is a Stevens subplate vise. But uh, I guess a, a similar vise would be a Kurt too, without the mounting ears. Works so much better. I got a standard Kurt six inch down there under that jump there. Just works so much better to lock it down. You can angle it and stuff like that. I'm gonna make some uh, specialty clamps to grab this thing and, and, and hold it down. This is a torque limiting vise here. It's got this collar you adjust with a hook wrench and it's got a clutch. So it uh, doesn't over tighten. You can set it, you know. Like uh, they, they use these over at, uh, uh, at Hanford at one time, uh, working with materials that would uh, get stress rises. You could only compress the material so much before you damage it, and they could see it in x-rays. So that's what this type of uh, vice is all about. And I tell you, it's extremely powerful vice. 
Oh, the heat's coming on to maintain my 68 degrees. Isn't that totally amazing? Totally amazing. So I found uh, the Axelson is just a really darn good machine. And uh, it's uh, really easy to use. Now, the last machine I had that I owned was a 16-inch Rod and Shipley Model 1610 power turn. And it's like a size heavier than a 14-inch. And uh, it was quite a bit more cumbersome than this size. And uh, that's most of the older lathes around here are the size up, 16 to 18-inch. Uh, but they would call that an 18 and 20-inch, you know. This one's a 14, but it's a 16, and the Lodge and Shipley 16 was actually an 18. <laughs> but anyway, this size, the smaller size, is just extremely nimble. And I'm out of time here. I've just got very few seconds left. And uh, gosh, I, I rambled on a whole bunch, but uh, I'm trying to make this place efficient, and I'll get back with more on those ideas too. Bye.